Hello and a very big welcome to you. We are live at the Guiana Space Center for the launch of the next four satellites in Europe's very own satellite navigation system. It's called Galileo and right now they are on the pad waiting inside an Ariane 5 launcher to lift off. That's scheduled in roughly 19 minutes time. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm in the Mission Control Center here. It's called Jupiter. The operational teams focusing hard at this point uh, before launch behind me here. And we're about 14 kilometers from that pad, but Thierry Bouva is an awful lot closer. Thierry. Nous sommes effectivement près, Katie, à yes, indeed, we are just five kilometers from the launch vehicle, which is just behind me, five kilometers from the launch zone. And to my left, you can see around 100 people who are with me here to enjoy the launch out in the open. We will see it hear it and feel it. What I suggest now is that we take a look at some of the details about the launcher. It's an Ariane 5 for ES version. It measures a little over 47 meters, weighs 760 tons at liftoff, and the initial thrust comes from the solid boosters that surround the Vulcan 2 engine. There are four passengers this evening, weighing 716, 717 kilos each. In total, today's performance is 3,284 kilos. This is the eighth uh, full operational capability mission. Over to you, Katie. So, Thierry, thank you. Yes, uh, if all goes well today, we will have 26 new satellites in space, all of them launched by Arian Space. And uh, the CEO of Arian Space is Stefan Israel. Stefan joins me now. Thanks for coming to the floor, Stefan. Um, we're launching on an Ariane 5 today, and it's actually the 99th launch of an Ariane 5. That's a, a pretty important day, right? Yes, it's very exciting to launch for uh, the 99th time on Ariane 5. On September, we will make the 100th, so it will be also a great uh, moment. But today, it is a day of Galileo for ESA and the European Commission. So, um, Stefan, the uh, countdown is going how? Is all going well? Can you talk us through the countdown and also what we can expect to see in the next hours or so. Yes, so we are now uh, at a few minutes from the launch. Uh, the countdown has done perfectly well. The weather is green, so we are uh, now at a few minutes from the launch. The liftoff shall occur at 8.25 a.m. You know that the liftoff occurs seven seconds after the initiation of the Vulcan. It will be a rather long mission because this mission will last three hours and 56 minutes and five seconds. We will have a separation two by two of the four spacecraft, 20 minutes before the end of the mission for the first two and 20 minutes after the, uh, at, the, at the end of the mission for the two other. So we will have to be very patient. We will have two boosts of the upper stage. So it's a rather complex mission, but Ariane 5 will deliver for the third time on Galileo and all will be perfect. Stefan Israel, thank you very much indeed for joining us. And uh, I'm going to allow you now to take up your position in the, uh, the fishbowl um, at, at your desk. Stefan, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank so, you very much. Uh, Stefan has uh, outlined for us that, uh, yes, we do have a long launch today. Stefan's now going to go back to... We call this the fishbowl here behind us. It's the, the glass where the operational teams are working, and each of those teams has their own separate desk uh, dedicated to those teams. And Stefan will be taking up his position in the flight directorate. We'll see him in that fishbowl shortly. Uh, but as he said, yes, it is a long mission. We are going to be uh, taking uh, just about four hours to deliver our satellites onto their orbits. And uh, we will be taking you through that mission, Thierry and I. So let's go over now to Thierry. Yes, uh, Katie, let's take a look at the status panel. You can see that everything is green. This uh, reflects everything that's required here, the launcher, the passengers, and all of the resources on ground, and, of course, the weather. The launch uh, this morning will be at a specific moment. You know this. This is for a simple reason. The, the four satellites have to be uh, injected into a very precise orbit, uh, one after another, 
they're going to be working for some 12 years, and uh, that means there has to be a lift off at a specific moment. At GMT, it's 11 hours, 25 minutes, and one second. The Ariane space mission this morning is going to last from the lift off to the jetsoning. It'll be 3 hours, 56 minutes, and uh, 54 seconds. It is a long mission. And this is something we're familiar with for the European Space Agency and for the Galileo program. Under the fairing, we have four satellites, 23, 24, 25, and 26. So, Galileo is a program by Europe for Europe. Uh, it's a program for the European Commission under a contract uh, with the European Space Agency. And the Director General of the European Space Agency is Jan Werner. Jan, thank you very much indeed for coming to the floor. Jan, before we get into today's mission, can you just tell us about the role of ESA in Galileo as a whole? Yeah, so it's, uh, for us it's, uh, of course, a very important mission because here we can show that we cooperate, the European Union and ESA. And ESA is responsible for all the things like procurement of the different satellites, the design of the satellites, the technical issues. But also, as you see here, also for the, at the launch uh, time, we, are, we have a very important uh, role to play. And therefore, for us, it's very, very, very important thing. And I look over always here to the people and all these people dedicated to this launch. And therefore, for ESA, it's a very important method, mission. And we are happy. And it's not only these four hours for us. Uh, this is for Ion Space. But for us, of course, the mission is much longer because Galileo is really a very important thing. Absolutely. And, and what about today's launch? Why is today important? Today's launch has several uh, special aspects. So first of all, we are completing the constellation uh, to 26 uh, satellites. We had about 22 satellites in four years, which is really something. Um, but now we have uh, the, the last four satellites, and therefore people can use it uh, from now on. Uh, so what does it mean to me? If I'm, for example, navigating through a shopping centre with my telephone, what does having a full constellation mean to me in that? So, number one, you can already use it. You can use it if you have a phone like this. You can see here the different satellites. So they are, you can receive them. So uh, Galileo is working. Um, we started with the initial services some uh, two years ago, but now really each and everyone can use it if he or she has the right uh, uh, instruments. And that means we have a better accuracy and it's not in competition with the American Galileo called GPS. It is really that uh, you can add both of the uh, satellite data and therefore the accuracy becomes even better, uh, the coverage becomes better and uh, so far Galileo is the best in class with, with its accuracy. Now you, you mentioned earlier that you've launched 22 satellites in four years and uh, for anyone who's not familiar with the space world that is very very impressive. Yeah it's not only that you start uh, two hours before and you meet here in Jupiter and then you launch a rocket. This is months, uh, even years of preparation to design the satellites, to build the satellites, to operate them, uh, all the structure, to bring them here. And all the preparation is really a long task. And to have 22 satellites within four years, this is really an achievement. And I really thank all the people in the industry as well in the agencies, in CNES and uh, also here in uh, Ion Space, but also, of course, at ESA, the European Space Agency. Jan Werner, thank you very much indeed and very best wishes for today's launch. So let's go back to you now, Thierry in Toucan. Oui, Cathy. Eh bien, écoutez, euh, juste un petit mot de yes, la salle Katie. Let me just say something about where you are on Jupiter, because just behind you there is the senior flight desk under the auspices of Stéphane Israël with the assistance of Roland Lagier, who's the technical and quality director at Ariane Space. This is the ultimate control center. It's where all of the decisions are taken that have to be taken for the countdown to go ahead as it should in full compliance of all security and safety rules. We are waiting for the last report of the weather briefing that is at uh, H minus 10 minutes. We'll be getting uh, the feedback from that soon. There was a uh, weather briefing at H minus 20, and that was good. Uh, we can tell you that there are a few clouds in the sky, but that's all if we look skywards. The senior flight desk is the ultimate decision-making center, as I said, here at the Guiana Space Center. What I suggest now is that we now fly up into the skies, thanks to the drone that we have, and we will be flying over Europe's spaceport. 
So follow me. This is the Route de l'Espace, the space road that takes us into the 700 and odd square kilometers of the whole space port. This is the payload preparation building where the spacecraft are prepared. And now we have the launch integration building where there's the vertical assembly of the different components that make up Ariane 5. And then we come to the final assembly building where the spacecraft are hoisted onto the top of the launcher. This is the CDL-3, which is as close as you can get to the launch zone. We'll be coming back to that shortly. Let's move to the launch zone, starting with Ariane 5. Since 96, there have been uh, 98 launches. This evening is the 99th launch of an Ariane 5. Vega, well, Vega, there have already been 11 successes since it had its first launch uh, joining the family in 2011. And Soyuz, Soyuz uh, close to Sinamari. The work began there in 2005. Uh, it's a tremendous uh, site, and uh, it, it was in October 2011 that the first uh, Soyuz uh, flew up from the equator. Now, let's look to the future. This is the work site for the, Europe, the new European launcher, Ariane 6 uh, launch zone. This is the Ariane 5 dedicated launch zone, ELA. Three, but as you can see, uh, there are a huge number of buildings here with the three launch zones, soon to be four, all their dedicated buildings. You can just imagine the logistics of everybody communicating with each other, and uh, to do that, they need to be listening to one person in particular, and that is this man today, Joël Egalji, the range operations manager. He calls out the important milestones. Attention for the sequence final, lanceur. Coming up to the synchronized sequence. Top, à 0 moins 7 minutes. Cette séquence synchronisée est donc bien engagée. Les calculateurs au sol effectuent les dernières mises en œuvre électriques et mécaniques. Cela va aboutir progressivement à l'autonomie du lanceur et des passagers avant le décollage. Les ordinateurs de bord vont donc the prendre la main. Ils vont gérer le décollage They will manage the lift off and also the flight program. La campagne a débuté, on va the le campaign le began on the 4th of May with the arrival in Kourou of the first spacecraft. Let's take a look at the different phases in detail together with the, the person in charge of the operations here. Ariane 244 will be the 10th launch of Galileo satellites at the Ghana Space Center and the third with an Ariane 5 launch vehicle. With Ariane 5, we'll be placing four Galileo satellites in orbit for the FOC-M8 mission. The first two satellites arrived in French Guiana late April and were transferred to the preparation hall. The second pair of satellites arrived in French Guiana early June and joined the first two in building S1A. All four satellites successfully passed their preparation phase of tests and checks before being transferred to the filling hall of building S3B. There, the satellites were filled with propellant and finalized before entering the POC, the combined operation phase. At that time, the satellites were integrated on the dispenser structure, transferred on the final assembly building, and installed on the launcher. Finally, the fairings were transferred and integrated on the launcher. The launcher campaign began on June 11. Ariane Group, Ariane Espace and Industrial Team, made up of 300 people, worked out to meet the deadline of this last launch of Ariane 5 ES version. On Friday, the launch readiness review authorized us to carry out final operations and transfer the launcher to the pad. The synchronized sequence will begin seven minutes before liftoff and all operations will be carried out automatically. Jusqu'au décollage. 
So there you have it. That's what's going to be happening. And right now, we are four minutes and 15 seconds to launch. I'm back in my commentary box, and I'll be working from here, hosting the show from here from now on. We saw the status panels back there, all green. That means we are go for launch. Program director's desk, Thierry Fayem, in charge of the contract for Ariane Space. And this is Paul Verhoff, who's the director of navigation. All these teams work very closely together and they know each other extremely well. There's teamwork in industry too. The German prime contractor OHB led the industrial teams to supply the satellite bus and UK-based SSTL built the payloads mainly owned by Airbus. Now we were looking at mission control earlier. Mission controllers deal with everything associated with the whole mission, but launch control, this is the building we're looking at now, is to do effectively with the launch operations. They are in a special building, three kilometers from the pad. It's made of concrete to protect everybody as it's so close to the pad, often known as a bunker in the region of uh, 150 or so people working here today. Various different teams. They deal with all the systems concerning the launch vehicle and the launch zone. And right now their job is to make sure that Ariane 5 is ready for takeoff. Although, of course, they started their preparations months ago. They're monitoring these events during the synchronized sequence. The computers, as we heard earlier, are running all the final controls and they have to coordinate an awful lot of checks in a very short space of time. Just under two minutes now to launch. We can see here, this is the Jupiter Contro uh, Mission Control Center and our drone is flying over because uh, all our VIP guests who were inside have now come outside to watch the launch with their own eyes rather than on the big screens here in the Mission Control Center. Hopefully it's going to be a beautiful launch for them because uh, Ariane 5 is uh, a very big launcher. It's our heavyweight in the Ariane Space family. We have seven seconds of delay, as Stefan said, between ignition of the first engine and the switch on of the boosters when the rocket leaves the pad. So you can count to seven when you see the first burn. À tout de l'EDO, attention pour H0-1 minute. And the range operations manager is announcing we're coming up to one minute. Top, H0-1 minute. So we have one minute to lift off. We're live at the Guiana Space Center for the launch of four satellites for Europe's Galileo Satellite Navigation Constellation for the European Commission and the European Space Agency, built by a consortium led by OHB and traveling on board flight number VA244, the third Ariane 5 ES heavy lifter to transport Galileo satellites. Our best wishes to all the teams. À tous de DDO, attention pour le décompte final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, top. Allumage Vulcain. Allumage des deux EAP et décollage vers 244.
la propulsion indominale. Vous voulez pas remettre à bord son normaux C'est une puissance, très franchement. Euh, vous voulez pas mettre à bord son normal Un grand, grand moment. Vous entendez euh, le DDO nous annoncer que tout est normal à bord. Le vol est donc bien engagé. C'est absolument impressionnant. Quelques secondes après la ah, lumière, et les paramètres propulsifs sont conformes à l'attendu. Décollage, on ressent effectivement la vibration et on entend ce son qui qui secoue l'atmosphère ici à Toucan. Donc voilà, euh, l'Ariane 5 avec quatre satellites pour Galileo est actuellement en Those boosters are propelling us, doing all the work right now. On la suit parfaitement, le ciel est... Altitude 51 km, tous les paramètres à bord sont normaux. Tout est normal et on va se séparer des premiers éléments. 2 minutes 23 de travail pour les accélérateurs à poudre. Ces étages d'accélération vont être séparés. Voilà qui est fait. On vient de se séparation des étages d'accélération à poudre. 277 tonnes par deux. Imaginez, euh, il n'y a pas encore 3 minutes de vol et il y a à peine un, un quart de l'Ariane 5 initiale qui est encore en vol en termes de masse. La poussée au décollage. 13 000 kN. Euh, imaginez, cela équivaut à la puissance de euh, 11 Airbus à 380. On est toujours dans euh, la recherche euh, absolue de. Enfin, du rattrapage de la, à suite à la séparation des étages d'accélération à poudre. Des, ap des applaudissements so mérités pour cette Ariane 5. Euh, je disais donc qu'on va alléger une fois de plus et ce sera la coiffe cette fois-ci. Passer les 100 km d'altitude, elle n'est plus utile. Et cette coiffe, eh bien, tout simplement, on va s'en débarrasser. Paramètres propulsifs sont conformes à l'attendu. Tout se déroule de bonne manière, vous l'entendez. Nous attendons l'annonce de la séparation de la coiffe. Ça doit intervenir à 3 minutes et 45 secondes de vol. Ça ne saurait tarder donc. Voilà qui est annoncé. Séparation des deux demi-coiffes. De ton en bois. Pour vos Thierry, vous êtes en ça live. Le capitaine a maintenant switched off the seatbelt signs. Fin du rattrapage suite à la séparation des deux demi-coiffes. Très très bien. Yes, indeed, Katie, and everything's going fine here in Toucan. Here I have with me one of the special guests for this morning, Marco Falcone. Hi. Plaisir d'être avec toi aujourd'hui. Hello, Thierry. I'm very happy to be here. I was at two, so you know, this is my first time. It's great. And when you see this at just five kilometers distance, what do you feel? Well, you see the light. It's so bright. It's pretty incredible. The boosters that uh, ignite, it's absolutely fantastic. And then you feel this deep rumbling sound. It goes straight to your heart. It's just adrenaline, pure adrenaline. Yeah, it's really emotional. It's absolutely extraordinary. You feel like a child. It's like a special present you've got. Yes, exactly. And then knowing that there were four satellites that we were waiting for, that's uh, just absolutely terrific. It's uh, just so great to be able to watch this launch with all our colleagues, the colleagues I've worked with at PISA, at the European Commission. Guru French Guiana. In a dedicated clean room, one of ISA's new Galileo satellites is going through a fit check. Here, the satellite's condition and functions are being checked thoroughly one last time before launch. Together with three of its brothers, this satellite will be sent into orbit on top of an Ariane 5 launcher. It will be the third and final Ariane 5 launch for Galileo 
and these satellites truly mark the end of an era for the programme. They are the final satellites needed to complete the first cycle of building the constellation. With this launch we will have a, a complete uh, constellation for operational purposes, but yet without the necessary reserve satellites which are essential if, uh, if ever something goes wrong that we have of course backups. Uh, so we have said that we would move towards around 30 satellites in orbit, um, that is 24 operational and six reserves. This uh, amount uh, will be reached. We may sometimes be under that. Uh, we may sometimes, after a launch, be over it. So this is a figure which fluctuates a bit. The important number is that we need 24 satellites for operational purposes functioning at any one time. Once the satellites are in orbit, the constellation will comprise 26 satellites and be fully operational for the first time. Quite an achievement when you consider that 22 of these satellites were only launched in the last four years. It was also the first time the European Space Agency had to build so many satellites in such a short time. However, ESA and industry faced up to this challenge and have now mastered both this technology and the production process. But the satellite design was not solely focused on the mass production aspect. The quality of the navigation signal and of the services are key to the success of Galileo. The quality of the Galileo performance can be assessed by its users who have had access to the initial operational services which were started by the European Commission two years ago. Furthermore, new smartphones are ready to receive Galileo signals. So Europe finally has its own operational satellite navigation system. A must in the modern world. It took many years to build Galileo, but now it is a shining example of a well-performing satellite navigation system. It allows Europe to be at the forefront of a domain that is now fully part of our daily lives. And during that film, we picked up the signal at the tracking station at SNA. It's a boat in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. And you can see our flight path there taking us out across the Atlantic Ocean towards the Azores. That's our next tracking station to pick up our signal. And if you look at the top right-hand side of the screen, you can see that our trajectory, that's the planned trajectory for the vehicle, the white spot, the... Uh, rather the uh, cross, if you like, is our launcher, its actual position. And you can see that the trajectory looks a little bit like a roller coaster. It's the, the launcher has gone up into the sky, its altitude has increased, and we plateaued out a little bit, and we are now starting to climb again, and we're really picking up speed now in order to start going higher and higher later in the flight, and you can see we are just climbing now our altitude bottom left 156 kilometers above the earth and this is the scheduled moment now extinction de l'epc et séparation the engine on the upper stage you can see it orientating itself there twisting and turning getting ready it switched its engine on now and this is really the beginning of the next phase in the journey. The upper stage takes the wheel. Its job is to transport the satellites to their correct orbit so that we can release them and they head off on their own journey in medium Earth orbit. Today we're using a version of Ariane 5 called ES. The upper stage is the ES version. It's been specially adapted for originally the ATV cargo ship. ATV was the ship um, that took supplies to the International Space Station. We just um, saw Charlotte Besco there who used to work on the ATV project. And it's now being used to transport the Galileo satellites. It can switch its engine on and off and it can orientate, orientate itself in space effectively to go in different directions depending on the needs of the satellites. He's telling us that everything's going normally.
So as we said, the flight path takes us out northeast across the Atlantic, past the west coast Acquisition of Europe. Acquisition of the by the station of Santa Maria des Açores. And we can hear there that we're picking up the tracking station at the next, the signal rather, at the next tracking station in the Azores, Santa Maria. It's an island in the middle of the Atlantic and it's just west of Portugal. So ESA is responsible for developing Galileo and the EC is responsible for managing it. From the very beginning of my mandate in the European Commission, I had a goal to deliver Galileo on time and on budget and show that space matters for Europe. We had a clear objectives to improve infrastructure so we can deliver as soon as possible first services and safeguard rapid market uptake. With 22 satellites currently in orbit and the launch of today with four more, we are completing the objective. In 2015, we decided to speed up by using the European Ariane 5 heavy launchers. And it was the right decision that ensured an autonomous access to space for Europe. In December 2016, we announced initial services. This means that Galileo is today operational and working for users. I am happy to see that the Galileo search and rescue service is working well. Galileo helps to save lives at sea or during natural disasters, especially thanks to strong cooperation with emergency centers and services. The last few years, Galileo has become a global brand. Most smartphones sold today use Galileo. The users can therefore be counted by hundreds of millions. Today Galileo is also widely used in agriculture. Thanks to satellite technology, precision farming can use satellite data to allow real-time management of crops, fields and animals. Galileo also contributes to the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions via a better routing of the traffic more efficient approaches to airports. On the 6th of June, we announced 16 billion euro EU space program. We are putting the ambition and vision we expressed in the space strategy for Europe into concrete proposals so that Europe can remain a global leader in space. Our objective is clear, to make Galileo the most precise satellite navigation system in the world and a clear competitive asset for the development of connected cars Internet of Things, or traffic management. Galileo has been from the start and will remain a question of strategic autonomy for our security and defense. Finally, Galileo, like the other EU flagship Copernicus, are perfect examples of European successes. Not a single member state could have done it alone. So my message is clear. Europe is a space power intends to be for the long run. So you can see from that film how important Galileo is and how vital a role it plays in all of our lives. On the right-hand side there, you can see... Well, just before we look at that, these are the images from the drone of the, computer, the uh, Jupiter Control Center. And you can see on the right-hand side, that's not the real Ariane 5. It's the uh, model, the famous model of uh, an Ariane 5. And you can see where we are located in the Amazon rainforest. We're right on the edge, actually, right by the sea, by the beach. Um, the computer-generated images on the right-hand side are showing us what's happening in space, but they are, of course, a simulation. The experts put information into the computer to generate those images for us so we can see them. And Galileo is Europe's navigation system, but it's not just for us Europeans. It's for people all over the world. And it's, as we heard, it's interoperable with the American system, GPS, and the Russian system, GLONASS, uh, the teams here in the Mission Control Center. The Galileo signal is available 
to the public free of charge. It provides a very accurate and guaranteed global positioning service under civilian control. And because it offers dual frequencies as standard, Galileo is really set to deliver even better real-time positioning accuracy, down to the range, actually, of less than a metre, I believe. And it's also providing, as we heard there, the search and rescue function. So the GSA ensures services are available to users and it plays an important role. Let's find out more now. Space and time. Time and place. Europe's two satellite navigation systems, Galileo and EGNOS, tell us exactly where we are and what time it is. They're revolutionizing transport, farming, logistics, and our daily lives. The European GNSS Agency is shaping this revolution. The GSA is a European Union agency whose unique mission is to ensure that citizens and society truly benefit from these state-of-the-art space solutions. The GSA's diverse staff includes engineers, security experts, as well as marketing and business development professionals dedicated to delivering high-quality, secure services to a growing group of users around the world. We don't launch satellites, nor do we build them. Yet from the moment they're in orbit, our teams on the ground are in charge of their security and performance, making sure that people can trust and rely on them in their daily lives or when they need them most. By constantly working closely with a broad range of stakeholders, we ensure that the EU satellite navigation systems are fit for purpose and continue to meet the needs of those who use them today and tomorrow. We also run the secure Galileo Public Regulated Service, a resilient signal reserved for governments, and manage research that leads to new applications and broadens horizons. The GSA is based in Prague and focuses on specific tasks from specialized centers across Europe. We're in the midst of a deep transformation of the way we interact with time and place. Space is a solution, an invisible infrastructure providing very visible services. Our role is to link space to user needs. Climbing into space now, top right hand side, you can see us, the cross climbing up into the sky, our altitude nearly a thousand kilometers. In the middle, the distance on the bottom of the screen is the distance from the pad if you were to draw a straight line across the Earth from the launch pad to the position where Ariane is right now. And our speed on the bottom right, it's Nearly nine kilometers per second, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, per second, not per hour. We are hurtling through space. Powered at the moment by the upper stage, its job is to deliver the satellites onto what we call a transfer orbit. That's going to be just under the final orbit for these guys, these satellites. They will be eventually at 23, just under 23,000 kilometers above our Earth. We'll be dropping them just slightly under their orbit for them to then climb to their final slot. The upper stage has a brain. It's called the Vehicle Equipment Bay, the VEB. It's the intelligent part. It's got its onboard computer. It's a whole management system, actually. It analyzes information from the engines, from navigation, etc., and it makes decisions for the best outcome of the mission. And right now, it's getting ready to switch off the engine. And there we have the engine switch off. We're now in what we call the ballistic phase. That means we're traveling without propulsion. 
we are high enough and fast enough to cruise without the engine. We are on celestial autopilot. Now this cruise phase Début takes over three hours and he's just told us that we're beginning the ori orientation maneuvers now. One of those is called the barbecue mode and it does what it says on the tin. It twists or rotates in order to maintain thermal homogeneity or equal temperatures all the way around, even temperatures, as if on a spit. Poursuite nominale de la manoeuvre d'orientation. All going normally, he said. This was 21 minutes ago. What a launch. Absolutely beautiful. Look at the birds flying away. The skies were clear. We lifted off from the pad at 8.25 local time here in Kourou, carrying our four Galileo satellites. Right now, they are attached and you can see the four of them. The white disc is the upper stage. Activation du mode barbecue. And here we go. He has now told us that the barbecue phase has started. So we are twisting and rotating as if on a spit. And there you can see our flight path. We lifted off from Gallio is the tracking station here on the northeastern coast of French Guiana at the spaceport. Look at that, lifting out from the jungle. Let's go over now to Thierry. Thierry, I don't know if you can hear me, but you watched the launch. You watched the launch, Thierry, from the front seats there on the edge of the Amazon rainforest. You really had a great view, didn't you? Yes, indeed, uh, Katie. We couldn't have been in better seats. If we'd wanted to be closer, we'd have had to have been in Ariane 5. So that was just impossible. It's a fantastic sight, and it was wonderful to see the lift, the lift off from Toucan. We're going to have a break now in the video transmission, and we'll be back in about three hours. To be more precisely, at 14.50 GMT, 11.50 Kourou time. And that means 16.50 in Paris. So, see you later.
suite nominale du mode barbecue. Un nominal de réception de la télémesure par la station de Santa Maria des Açores. Réacquisition prévue dans 1905 secondes environ, soit à 9h20 et 7 secondes. 